People of the Passion, the first one. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. Then he said to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour the disciple took her into his own home. This is the Gospel of the Lord. People of the Passion, the first one, the one unnamed. John, who cares? There at the foot of the cross are a small group of people, women for the most part, and curiously enough, most named Mary. It's thought that women were allowed to be onlookers at crucifixions, as they were unlikely to cause any trouble. For exactly the same reason, young men, lads, were allowed to be present too. But who then is the disciple whom Jesus loved? Does it matter that he isn't named? If the author himself doesn't mention the name, should we be bothered? Who cares? John is the only gospel writer who makes mention of this particular person being at the crucifixion. But if he's naming the women, why doesn't he name this male? It isn't the first time John has written about him, for at the Last Supper, Jesus describes how one of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Why no mention of his, there, of his name there either? Inevitably, there has been a lot of stuff written about this mysterious man. The most common conclusion is that he is John. But which John? John the Baptist? No, for as you will remember, he'd been beheaded so much earlier. John of the Cross? No, he flourished in the 16th century. John of God? He spent most of his life in the Iberian Peninsula. John the Faster? He lived in the 6th century. So many Johns. Of course, the obvious one is John the Apostle, the very writer of the fourth gospel. An apostle, of course, he would have followed Jesus and been known to him. My difficulty here is that he's bigging himself up by describing himself as the one whom Jesus loved. Were not all the disciples loved by Jesus? And did Jesus not rebuke the disciples when they were arguing which of them was the greatest? But just providing a tiny clue, John is letting those who followed Jesus and the disciples who'd cleared off know that he was there at the crucifixion. He was therefore a truthful, honest witness. By remaining anonymous, he ensured his own safety from those keen to eradicate these adherents to the potential movement. And it gave those who study the scriptures minutely much to consider. For the rest of us, does it matter? Who cares? And so to a painting. This painting is by Sandro Botticelli, a 15th century Florentine artist. What strikes me here are the big, bold, bright colours, red, green, blue, yellow. Such vivid colours contrast with the grief depicted. True, there are some funerals now where the mourners are asked to wear nothing dull or gloomy. And not here either, it would seem. Another oddity is that Jesus himself is almost ignored. He's right at the bottom of the painting, his head almost out of sight, and his wounds imperceptible and unblooded. The focus is on Mary. While she cradles Jesus, she cannot bear to look at him, her eyes closed tightly in grief. And there with her is a young man. It would seem he is following those final instructions of Jesus to look after her. But 
Like any young man in a tense, heartbreaking situation like this, he stands awkwardly, gauche. Yet he is doing just as Jesus has asked. His left hand seems to soothe her head, offering consolation rather than real support, whilst with his right hand he is delicately adjusting the cloth, the shroud of Jesus. It's John, the disciple whom he loved, who is enveloping both Jesus and Mary, the one person so important in his past, the other person a new responsibility his responsibility. Botticelli gives no clue that this is the disciple whom Jesus loved. While the women demonstrate their anguish, this long-haired lad is the one man who is physically and emotionally closest to Jesus. Is it? Could it be John? Some artists depict John with a scroll or an eagle thus making him out clearly as the writer of the fourth gospel. Not here. Does it matter? Who cares? Yes, who cares does matter. It is Jesus' final request, his last instruction, that John, let's call him that, should look after his mother, even as she was to care for him. It's Jesus ensuring that, his, that the elderly, his mother, and the young, this lad, should be able to support and comfort one another. So often we are told throughout the Bible to look after the widowed, the orphaned. Jesus does just the same. Ever faithful, ever true, ever looking to the other. Who cares? Jesus cares, right to the end. Let's pray. And a prayer of another John, John of Chrysostom. We are not worthy, Lord, that you should come beneath the roof of our souls. Yet since in your love to all people, you wish to dwell in love and in us, in boldness we come. You command, open the gates, and you will come in with love to all, with care for all. We believe that you will do this, for you do not send away any who came to you in tears, those repenting, those acknowledging you. All those who came to you, you did count in the band of your friends. You who lives blessed and forever, now and unto the endless ages, come to us, care for us. Amen. <laughs>